the question I've often been asked is what happens if everybody were to consume this kind of food, which is basically free of animal-based foods, free of processed foods, and emphasizing whole plant-based foods? What, what happens? Well, I think for one thing, we could save about 70 to 80 percent of health care costs, at least in the United States and maybe Western. That's, that's a big number. Uh, obviously, at the same time, we tend to avoid cancer, uh, little or no heart disease, no diabetes, bring obesity under control, and a lot of other illnesses. The remarkable thing about this diet is it has this very broad effect on a whole variety of different illnesses. The, the question really is how much protein do we need, especially should some of that be animal-based? And my answer is, based on the research, that we, none. And the reason I say none is because this allows our taste buds to change. So we become accustomed to the plant-based foods. And plants have all the protein we need. We do not need protein from animal sources. It's that simple. Because the protein from animal sources, when we start putting that in there, blood cholesterol levels start going up, heart disease will eventually follow, cancer begins to sort of grow faster. So we really don't need this, this kind of protein. Plants have exactly the ideal amount. And, and some people, of course, some people can have small amounts of you know, the wrong kind of food and do okay. But no one knows for sure you know, who they are, who, who's the most susceptible to various things. We just know the vast majority of people are going to respond in an unfavorable direction from consuming that kind of food. The, the, the question really has to do with you know, whether we need to consume animal foods in order to get certain nutrients, such as iron and zinc and maybe some protein, some calcium. In, in, in reality, the amount of nutrients present in plants, those kind of nutrients, is really ideal. We do not need animal foods to get those kind of nutrients. If we're consuming whole plant-based foods, that's key, whole plant-based foods, and a good variety, and, and so forth, good quality, you know, that's, that's the issue. Whole wheat bread. Whole, whole wheat bread. bread, yes, exactly. All the greens, vegetables, fruits, and things like that. I've been at this uh, business. I started my research career now more than 50 years ago. And so it, and, and I've noticed through the years, my colleagues, either in biomedical research or in the practice of medicine, my colleagues are kind of slow in taking this up. And at first, they're kind of resistant. I mean, I know that game because I was there myself. But and now I know that it's a different story. And it, it is discouraging at times to see some of them sort of react negatively the way they do. On the one hand, but on the other hand, just in the last maybe five, 10 years, I've been lecturing a lot to medical schools. And I just see an increasing interest on the part of my, my colleagues. And so they're beginning, they're, they're not objecting really they're beginning to embrace this because they know the effect it has, what effect it has. Young scientists who are coming along have been trained in the existing system or young doctors trained in the existing system, as our son, the one who wrote the book with me, has been. Um, they, they have a challenge. It's obvious they're working against a system. They're working against the system. But, you know, a little cleverness, a little bit of honesty, a little bit of courage, a little bit of feeling for, you know, who they're working with will take them a long ways. And just in other words, kind of stick to it. If you've got something that's useful, it's true, people respond, you know, just work with it. Just work with it. I think it's the best advice. First time I was getting information that the information was different than what I had been taught, maybe it was in the late 1970s, early 1980s. And at that time, it was kind of strange for me because I came from a dairy farm. And to say that the protein of cow's milk may be a problem, that was pretty serious. I mean, I published in the professional literature because it was accepted as good research, but I didn't talk too much about it in the public because I knew there was a lot of reluctance to get involved. Finally, in 1991, I think it was, the New York Times had a cover story on, on our work in China. They put a headline, something to the effect that meat is, they, they called it the Grand Prix of all studies. And then they, they said there was something about, you know, negative about meat. And I thought, oh my gosh, now it's out there. I had to make a choice. You know, do I become public or do I not? I either had to defend what they had when they added the headline or not. And I, I mean, I, it was clear to me. It was just a matter of being public. So I said, okay, I'm going public. And I knew at the time that there was going to be a lot of negative reaction. And it was, and it has been. 
coming from the industry, especially. But, you know, I, I was told early on in my life, especially by my father, always tell the truth, no matter what. And so, you know, I just, you know, the answer was easy. It doesn't make any difference what they say. 